How's it going everyone? This is Eric Drake and I am once again doing Bafo Asks What Episode 3 I have here with me CJ Price. What's going on folks? CJ Price is uh, very happily decided to help me out again uh, Episode 3 and uh, we have some questions for him some uh, some good ones some deep personal ones we're gonna find out the man the myth the legend Mr. <laughs> Price. So Mr. Price uh, thank you again for joining me here at my house. No problem. Apparently Casa de Drake is going to be a big filming spot because my car is out of commission at this point. <laughs> but it's nice. We've got a uh, table with an umbrella and it's a beautiful fucking day outside. Yeah, it's, it there's like no clouds in the sky. It's just fucking phenomenal. So anyways, we're going to get straight down to it. Again, this is the first take. This is not a second take. We, I haven't fucked around with the camera. I haven't taken any pictures. So again, all these questions that I'm asking CJ are for the first time and he is answering them for the first time again everything is 100 percent real so here we go first question i'm just gonna throw an easy one right off the bat what's your favorite wrestling video game um i would have to say either no mercy or smackdown versus raw 2006. that was a good year i, I prefer 2005 for myself but 2006 was definitely a good one and no mercy who could forget that uh, there's countless other great ones uh wrestlemania 2000 yes, that was great that was that, game. that was awesome um there's a couple of un unknown ones uh nitro i believe for oh. the playstation yes it was, it was okay it had some issues it had some issues but it was uh you know it was nice to see the playstation getting one so early um especially when the, the, the nintendo was just kicking ass at the time with those those wrestling games um Okay, so we got that out the way. So let's go a little bit deeper here. Uh, when did you start wrestling and why? I started wrestling back in 2008, uh, backyard wrestling, as everybody else did. And um, I just, I always loved wrestling since I was a little kid, since I was in diapers. Um, I remember going to my first ever wrestling show here in Springfield, 97 In Your House, DX pay-per-view. Nice. Yeah, so. That was that was amazing. Ever since then, I fell in love, and I was always wanted to step in the ring. And so, so it was mainly uh, be a fan of, of the sport that had got you into it. No one, no one in your family has done wrestling. It's just no, just me, just you. Just me. Okay, okay. Um, and so, as your career has progressed, wrestling, uh, you've done wrestling here and uh, for a couple of different uh, backyard organizations and, and a couple of different indie organizations. Um, you're watching TV, or you should I say you're watching the sport as a fan. Has that shifted at all um, in regards of how much you enjoy actually watching it, or is it more of a chore? No, uh, I really take this serious, man. I, I really want to become a professional wrestler one day, hopefully. And uh, if it doesn't happen, then I, I guess it wasn't meant to be, you know? CJ, how young are you? I'm going to turn 25 in a few days, actually. In a few days. All right. Well, hey, if I, if I don't see you, thank you. Happy birthday for that. Twenty-five. You know, twenty-five is still pretty young. Um, now, you had said that you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Uh, do you have any backup plans? Yes, uh, I want to be a either a radio broadcaster, or if I can, a commentator for for wrestling. Awesome. So this is clearly perfect practice right here. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, now for uh, broadcasting, have you, have you taken a look into any of the schools in uh, Connecticut? I yes, believe. the ESPN school, um, but they're expensive, man. <laughs> yes, yes. Any school that is not a traditional school, for some reason, decides to jam the expensiveness into it. I mean, I, I personally looked at uh, Porter and Chester right. for a um, for a quick um, a trade degree. And they have some the, the degrees there that you can finish in just a year, just a year. But of course, they're going to throw four years worth of schooling money into that one year, and it would have costed like twenty-one thousand dollars <laughs> for that one fucking year degree. Jesus Christ! You can go to fucking stick for like six years for for fucking like twenty-one thousand. It's like holy shit. But anyways, so that's awesome. Uh, I'm hey, good. You got. The backup plans um, um, because I mean obviously uh, the wrestling just like any other sport is kind of a, a I don't want to say a one in a million shot but it's 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 difficult especially in the area which we live in right now the Northeast yes. being so um, saturated with the indie market there's there's literally 
Hundreds. Hundreds, man. Hundreds. I can't even, I lost count. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you wrestle someone one week, and then the next week you're like, oh, shit, he, he left. Oh, this other guy's back. Oh, I'm wrestling this guy. It's, nice. Um, so how about this? So you've, you've been doing the indies a lot. Um, what's the funniest thing you've seen on a road trip to go to an indie show? Um, I really travel alone with my girlfriend, so I really don't have any road stories. Okay, okay. <laughs> you seen anything awkward when, you, when you've when you gotten to a place? Yes, people in the backstage naked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting into their gear, man. That's, that's a sight to see, man. <laughs> naked naked wrestlers is a big part of this. Um, in fact, uh, there was, um, I remember one time I was working this place in uh, Ludlow. Uh, it was um, some type of a VFW, some type of a, a veterans club place. And uh, our dressing room legit was about the size, uh, like there was an exit, an exit door, and like a cloth going one way and a cloth going the other way. So <laughs> there was something like 15 to 20 wrestlers jam packed in like an eight by eight fucking square of cloth. <laughs> and there was female wrestlers too. So like it was, it was kind of ridiculous. They were trying to, you know, get changed and stuff like that. And you could see them working a towel and this, this, and then that. <laughs> It was just, it was like, we we can't even, we can't even use the bathrooms. I mean, what the fuck is it? Whatever, kayfabe by <laughs> ass. Um, so yeah, so I, I've I've heard some naked stories too. Yes, yes. Uh, one of which, um, I forgot who told me this, but apparently uh, Tony Atlas, wow, that motherfucker, apparently just sits around in the, in the locker room naked. Wow. Just playing with himself. What? Apparently that's that's what I heard. I forgot who told me this. So he just, he just. I just met Tony Atlas a couple weeks ago and shook he, his hand. Damn it! Yeah, yeah. He's just <laughs> taking his finger. He's just, just fucking playing around. His, I, I don't know. Maybe it was a bad booking. Maybe that day he just didn't want to, just didn't want to do whatever he was doing. I don't know. That's that's just what I heard. Uh, anyways, we'll move on. Um, so we're gonna get a little bit into deeper stuff here. Uh oh. Very deeper stuff. I think we're gonna hit the we're gonna hit the bottom right here. Now, CJ, not many people know about this. And that's, that's another reason why we're going to talk about this, just to give the um, uh, some newer people some some light, some some introspective, if you will, into our group here at WMWA. Now uh, there was a time, I don't remember what year it was, um, you had you had joined us, and for a, for a very very brief time, mm -hmm. and um, an altercation had happened, right. in which you were then no longer wrestling with us. I remember that uh, for for some time. Uh, yeah. Would you like to comment on that? Would you Would you like to, to talk about that for a second? Uh, uh, I believe I was 14 years old, and um, it was at Big C's house when you guys had the real ring. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe had I had a practice match against Dawson, and I guess I botched a move, and uh, Dawson got mad at me and kicked me out. Okay, now. How do you how do you how do you feel about that? I mean, I was young, so I really didn't, you know. So you so you believe that your um, your youth and inexperience had yes. had contributed to it. Now yes. now was it now was it your youth that you didn't know? Uh, maybe maybe you outstretched your 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 bounds, or or you tried doing something that at that time you thought you it, could do and you you couldn't do, or what what. It was just me being stupid and trying to show off in front of people. You know? Fair enough. We, we've all been there. We've all been young doing stupid shit. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking 28, I'm turning 29 here in, in October, and I, I, I can honestly remember doing some really stupid shit back back in my day. You know, egging this and fucking vandalizing that, and just, it's, <laughs> and then as a parent, I like I get it, or not a parent. Oh, uh, what to say? Yes, so, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Um, as as an older person, you know, you just I mean, still not even thirty yet, but still pretty old. Looking back and just the shit that I did, it's like, who the fuck was that? Like, just it, tremendous, stupid. But of course, we learn, we grow from it. Um, and obviously, you have because yes. you've you've been here with WMWA quite a many number of years. Yes. Um, now, uh, the the issue that had happened. Um, why did you come back? Why why did you do want to come back? I mean, I love wrestling and, and uh, I'm gonna steal something from John Cena and never give up. 
all right, all right. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted an opportunity, and I guess I got the second opportunity that I deserved, and, you know, now I'm here. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, hey, I, I definitely... Um, I definitely admire that uh, something uh, the the never give up attitude. Um, it, it's uh, personally why I've come to respect you over the years a little bit more um, than I had at first. But then again, any type of respect takes time. Right. Um, I mean, we might not you know go hang out for a smoke or something like that. You know, we we might not be you know going bowling and shit like that as buddies. <laughs> but there ain't no problem right here why I can't invite CJ over, do a little promo. You know, share a glass of OJ and just, uh, you know, just talk. There ain't no reason why we can't do that. And I, and I invite anyone in WMWA, you know, to go ahead and do the same. Message me. Hell, fuck, come on over. How we talk? So, CJ. I'm tough. Tough enough. Tough enough. You had, um, I guess, applied. I, I'm not quite sure of the process. Right. Um, had applied and had been put on their webpage yes. as part of a, I guess, a finalist or quarter finalist or whatever the, the process actually went into. Now, um, did you get any sort of letter from someone or, or actual... Uh, Triple H sent an automated email. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yes. That, that seems like something that Triple H would do is send an automated email. Yes. What, what did it say? It said, uh, sorry, but... Um, at this time, we're not going to select you, or something like that. Something on, along those lines. Was there at least anything encouraging about it? Was I said, keep going, uh, don't give up, and try next season, I guess. Good, all right, all right. <laughs> Matt, <laughs> but I, uh, a lot of people told me it was a work, so I don't know. It was a work? What, the, oh, the whole... The whole tough enough deal is a work. Really? Yeah. So, well, but hey, it got me a... Uh, Got my name out there, so you know. Yeah. I mean, well, shit. Yeah, I would have been confused. Uh, you know, it's funny though. I had seen um, there was a clip put on uh, Facebook. Um, it was one of those stupid vines, and when it, when it says, you know, your girlfriend does this or blah blah blah, and it showed someone from the the newest Tough Enough season. Right. Um, it was a chick, and she tried taking a flip bump for the first time. <laughs> and she she didn't even flip. She like landed flat on her fucking face, and it just. <laughs> I'm like, oh god damn! I was like, why? Why didn't they pick CJ? Like, yes, <laughs> like, I would have excelled. I know, like, it, it, we we watched them. The Tough Enough has had a couple of seasons, yes. And you know, you get the the rawest of raw people in there, and they take the bumps and they do this, and you get to see them legit just get fucked up in the ring because they don't know what the hell they're doing. Right. And it, for once, it would have just been funny to see. You know, someone that, that knew a little bit about what they're doing here, get in there and just blow fucking everyone away. It would have been interesting, but they're looking for you know big muscular guys. <laughs> and it, it's it's unfortunate, but you know it's uh, that that is one part of the business. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it going from uh, uh, promotion to promotion. Yes. The certain standard, the certain physique. Uh, now, as a smaller guy, um, how do you how, how are you playing around that? Because I mean. Recently, I just heard you were a MAW champion. Yes, MAW United States champion. Okay, all yes. right. Well, congratulations <laughs> on that. Thank you. Now, now is is that a, a, a more of well-known indie fed or they... it's, a, it's an indie fed in Rhode Island, Providence. Um, okay, come check it out if you can, guys. 60, 681 Providence, Rhode Island, and Broadway Street. <laughs> Google it. This is that fucking simple. Um, awesome, awesome. All right, uh, now. How how did you get to get there with again your your, your size? Well, um, I know some of the guys that run that um, promotion, so they got me into it. Okay. And uh, I'm not the only small guy there, so. All right. Well, they well uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a couple other smaller guys, but I'm sure there's a couple like yes. big C looking yes. motherfuckers there too. Yeah, I'm I don't sure. know if you um, know this guy. He's he's local. His name is Judge Logan Chambers. That name sounds really familiar. He's, he's big. He's got a big beard and everything. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it escapes me at this time. But no, no, no. I, I, I know a couple people. I mean, I wasn't in I wasn't in Indies all that long. I was only in there for about a year and a half, maybe two years of that. Yeah. actual, uh, you know, going around and doing this stuff. So I only know certain people. And I'm sure a bunch of those people have uh, dropped out at this time and tried to find, you know, real jobs and stuff. Because, you know, again, <laughs> again, I'm turning 30. No fucking education. So I'm... 
you you gotta do something. <laughs> you gotta do fucking something because uh, this house don't come cheap. These dogs don't come cheap. I don't come cheap. People don't come cheap. <laughs> so you know you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, now a question that was actually brought from the web. Okay. I'll specifically say this one. Some of the other ones were too, but I'll, I'll specifically mention this one. Um, now we don't exactly have the biggest roster here no. uh, for for WMWA, but. Is there anyone that you've wanted to wrestle that you have not had a chance to? One on one, or or just in general? Just well, there's this new kid, WMWA. His name is Johnny Thrice. Very impressive. Um, I believe uh, HG uh, and Logan X and those those guys brought him in, and I really want to wrestle him one on one. Thrice. All right. All right. So calling you out right now. So yes. rush book it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, this 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 is getting posted early enough to uh, I mean, when's the when is the next show? We actually confirmed a date. Uh, I think it's August twenty third. August twenty third, and this is what July fucking twenty fifth or something like that. Yes. So so this is like a month or something like that, completely beforehand. I, I'm quite sure. I believe I have a triple threat match against Johnny Thrice and Taylor Maid for the Supreme Championship. Well, there you go. A small preview right there between C.J. Price and Johnny Thrice. Um, of course, not discounting. Taylor made. Taylor made. You say it was the third one. Yeah, he's the champion. So I, oh, <laughs> that would make sense. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't exactly followed as much as I should have, but um, but of course, if something does get brought to my attention, I will check that shit immediately. Okay. Like our last posting on Facebook uh, about a uh, Mr. Mr. Kincaid. Oh God. Uh, posted something, and I, so I immediately decided to watch. He reminds me of me when I was when I first started off. I didn't want to lose or anything like that. <laughs> now, I mean, you you've come to know all of us, um, you know, on a much greater level in WMWA. Now, seeing again, like you were saying, seeing him as kind of how you were back in the day versus now, I'm sure you just went like, "Oh shit, what did he just do to right. his, his head?" Like, "Oh fuck, that's not going to work here at all." Right. <laughs> um, I mean, any any inspiring words for him right now? Because, I mean, you're right on um, camera. Keep your mouth shut and ears open. That's all i got to say. All right, all right, all right. And, I mean, if, if anyone has any problems, I've come to know this from experience. Um, the, the worst thing to possibly do is to tell someone who can't do anything about it. Right. Like, if, if, if I was still there and Rush was booking... And I had a mattress with CJ, and I said, "Rush, what the fuck are you doing? I'm not fucking wrestling CJ today." <laughs> like, blah 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 blah. And I decided to go ahead and tell this to like fucking Taylor. There's there's no reason to, to talk about him because Taylor's then gonna hear about it, mm -hmm. and you know I don't know whether or not he's gonna say anything, but you know he might tell someone else, he might tell someone else, and eventually it's gonna get back to Rush, and it's not gonna sound quite as what I originally had said. I'm sure it's gonna sound something like. Fucking Drake is gonna snip the fuck out of CJ. <laughs> this, you, you better stop this match. It's gonna go fucking wrong. But just, just quietly go up to whoever's booking at the time. Yes. If it's Rush or if it's Dawson or who the fuck ever it may be at the time. We've had Olin fucking booking in the past. You know who who the fuck ever. Just just go up to him. Just quietly voice your concerns. And you know what? There is no um, working over. Politically, in this group. Uh, well, you know what I learned in wrestling? Wins or losses don't mean crap, man. This is a predetermined sport. Exactly. And uh, sometimes you gotta put the other guy over, man. You gotta suck it up, man. Yeah. I mean, even even in WrestleMania, there's a loser. If you ever get a chance to, uh, you know, work for the, the WMWA uh, heavyweight belt, that right there alone is more than some people have actually done. Right. I can list a couple of people who have not fought for that belt yet. Okay, really? so I can't think of any of the top of my head right now. Uh, you know, I might be wrong about this. I'm gonna say it right now because I know he hasn't won it. So I'm just gonna say it right now. Uh, Anarchy. I don't think he's ever won, fought for it one on one. Yeah. So that that that's one person right now off the top of my head. I'm sure if I think about it, I, um, has. Has Bill ever fought for it? I don't know. I wasn't here when when he was part of the WWE. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, anyways, we're, we're getting off track here. So, I mean, again, 
I mean, you can you can clearly work as as long as you want within this group and do whatever, pretty much whatever you want to do. This is the most relaxed group ever. The only thing we ask really is you just show up, just show up and pay, and pay. Please, <laughs> please, please pay. I mean, it's not only five dollars. Come on, guys. it's a foot long, and it's even less than a foot long now because yes, tax and shit yeah. they fucking jack it up. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, we we have such an opportunity. Can you think of anyone at, at such a young age or around our age bracket that has access to a real professional wrestling ring? And not only that, but a place to do so. Right. Not in backyard. Not in a backyard. Not not to where someone can come in and just say, hey, you guys are shut down. You know, you're not fucking taping here anymore. To where cops can just come in the backyard and just say, well, what the fuck is this? And weather's not a factor either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, weather. I mean, holy shit, we've wrestled in snow, fucking <laughs> I rain. I remember that. I remember that shit. Jesus Christ. In fact, we had this one pay-per-view pretty much notorious for the snow, the torture chamber, <laughs> uh, back in the day. Uh, it was just, it was pretty much, hey, it's snowing here. Let's figure out when we can get over there and shoot the fucking pay-per-view because it's snowing. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Um... Wow. So, all right. So you said uh, Johnny Thrice. Yes. Was the. Um, I want to go one on one with Johnny Thrice someday. Now, you have held a couple number of belts. Yeah. Now, obviously, the one to go for here is the WMWA Heavyweight Title. Yes. However, I know myself. I might answer this question differently, uh, and a couple of other people might as well too. But if you had to pick a title run mm -hmm. that you've had, what would have been your favorite title run with what with which belt? Because I mean, as we all know, with a different title run, you're facing different people. You're I doing like, different I stuff. really enjoyed my heavyweight title run. It was fun. I had it, I think, for eight or nine months. All and my, any standout matches in there? Uh, I liked against Noel Cipher. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was a great match. That was one of my favorite matches. He's uh, Noel's doing uh, he's, pr pretty good by by the way. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's uh, uh, wrestling he's doing indies now, and uh, he might come back in the near future. Who knows? Well, hey, that would be great. Uh, that would definitely be great. Uh, I mean, him and his brother or cousin, or whatever they're doing, the uh, Jurassic Era, yeah. uh, are are pretty well known here. He's, he's really good in the ring. He's really improved, man. Good. Uh, if there's anything I can say about that, if you're watching. Please stop doing those swan, uh, those fucking backflips off the top rope. <laughs> One of you, either you or your brother. It's you, Noel. It's Noel. Is it? I, <laughs> you guys are bigger guys. Work on, work on that technical wrestling. I know you can do it, but you know what? If you ever fuck it up in the middle of a match, you are going to be the laughing fucking stock of the match, and it sucks. It, it sucks when you're when you're the when you're brunt of a bad joke. I know. I used to have. Back in the Indies, I, I, I used to have my hair kind of on the longer side. And, again, I'm not in ultra shape, right? So I come out there, kind of a big guy in a singlet, longer hair. And, you know, a couple motherfuckers be calling me Chris Farley. Wow. <laughs> Chris Farley in a motherfucking singlet. Can, I mean, <laughs> when you hear that when you're in the ring, that just, you just stop and you're like... You, just, you, you can't you can't do anything you just you've 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 lost all all <laughs> all momentum when you when you're when you're fucking told that um now cj uh as a as an indie wrestler um your gear right uh where do you go for your gear, do you make yours? Like a lot of the. I wish I could afford it, man. You know how much gear is nowadays. <laughs> gear is a lot. I mean, do you expensive? Do, I mean, on high spots alone, fucking. Uh, I go to elucha.com. Elucha.com. There you go. Uh, apparently cheaper than high spots. Yes. Because I've I, I've seen something in high spots. These nice, wet looking, what what I like to call the indie standard pants. Because everyone's rocking them. The fucking wet looks. <laughs> um, the uh, no offense, no. To anyone who rocks wet look, um, like $160 for a fucking no, pair I of pants. Paid, uh, believe it or not, $50 for the gear, my pants. There you go, there you go. Um, now, do you, have an, do you have any elbow pads or yes, knee pads? Yes, yes. Where'd you get those? Eat lucha as well? No, actually I went to Amazon. Amazon? Yes. Oh. That, you know, that, that's pretty damn smart too. I forget about Amazon. 
Good, good, good. And they're holding up. What what brand? What what, what brand? McDavid and uh, True uh, Trace. Trace. Yes. You know I have had the Trace elbow Best and knee pads. Elbow pads and knee pads ever. Yep. And uh, I've given them the bouncer right now, and I'm sure he could attest. Besides the fact they're a little too big, um, that I'm pretty sure that they're damn comfortable. In fact, I kind of wish I had them back so I could use them at work. I get on my knees a lot, so. Oh. Wish I. Okay, man. <laughs> wish I could have used them. It's <laughs> these 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 are getting bad here. Um, so, uh, so, do you do you own any um, gaming consoles? Yes, PlayStation Three only. Only only PlayStation Three. Yeah, I'm poor man. <laughs> Fair enough. Or do you do you go online to play? Oh yeah, you... Call of Duty and uh, a lot of sporting games. All right. Well, tell these guys here. Uh, CJ Price here owns PlayStation Three. W yes. What is your um, your um, your PlayStation uh, screen name? CJ underscore Moneymaker. That's right. So you know the man, you can play against him in, you know, all Anybody's those wrestling invited games. To get shot down in Call of Duty, so. This man be posting his screenshots all the time on Facebook. <laughs> Instagram. And Instagram. I've been seeing <laughs> I've been seeing him. He just he posts on Facebook, he's like, look look at what I did in Call of Duty. I'm just looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a beast, man. He, he is. He's good. He's good. <laughs> I sucked yesterday though, man. A bad day. Yeah, bad, bad, day, day. day. bad day. We we all have those bad days. I was playing Battlefield yesterday. And uh, sucks. Yeah, I was having like I was going like fucking two and fives and no, three I had and like seven. four and seventeen. <laughs> oh shit! Well, we we, we we have those too. All right, so we're we're kind of coming up on the on the end here, uh, CJ. And as what I like to do with everyone who who comes onto the show. Okay, what's up? Um, you now have the camera. Okay. WMWA is right now right in your face. What's up? What would you like to get off your chest? Um, I would just like to be uh, more respected in the locker room because uh, I've been here for quite a while now. I know some of the guys respect me and I know some of the guys don't take me as serious. But I would like to be more taken serious. That's what I want. That's, a, that's, a, that's it. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, I've been wrestling uh, a pretty decent amount of time. Um, Since I was like... Uh, 18, I believe. Yeah, well, that, you've been with us at least, well, plus. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, started at 14 again. Yeah. And so that's but I'm been, talking about, like, you know, full time, you know, doing it every week. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Of course. With, with the Indies and all that yeah. stuff. Well, that makes sense. Um, but as, as we all know, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying you do this at all, um, and this is just a shout out to everyone here. Uh, respect is a very big thing. It's earned. I know that. A very big thing in WMWA. It, it, it's earned. And as you notice, some of the people who have the, the most respect in WMWA, not me, because I'm a, I'm a blabbermouth. Um, <laughs> or I, I like running my mouth a lot. Um, are, are some of the most quiet people. Like Dawson, for instance. You don't see him running his mouth all around here this, again not a not a shot on cj i'm talking strictly to everyone here so well i'm very outspoken you know <laughs> it's, it's, it's true and you, you can't change who you are you can't that's why i'm doing the show i enjoy talking i talk loud i talk big cj he talks loud he talks big but he's gonna back it up in the ring at least he's gonna do his best anyways now no one oh i came up with a brilliant question last question here okay go ahead in the ring. Okay. What is the most thing that you're scared of in the ring? Someone not protecting me. Like, like during a move or just yeah, strictly? Yeah, during a move. You know, and that, that's, that, that's a big thing here, too. We, 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 we trust everyone yeah, to, to protect us. And, I mean, uh, my trainer, I know it taught me to always take your own bump because you never know if the guy is going to protect you or not. And I need to say one thing about that. Um, if you don't know how to do the move, don't do it, please. Exactly, exactly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there there are some moves you might be able to get away with because you you don't know how to do them, but they're standard enough, like a DDT, you, you, a suplex. You, you're not a hundred percent sure how to do it because you've never done it before, but you, I'm pretty sure you can figure that out. But if you try during a hurricanrana in the middle of a match and you've never done one before on practice or, yeah. <laughs> Just save it for practice. 
we have time. Yes. With with the that's why I open the doors at eleven o'clock. Exactly. So people can come in and warm up, but hey, nobody wants to take advantage. There's time before and there is time after. I I've heard a couple of times when you guys have been getting out at really early times, despite the fact that you've been double taping and stuff. I mean, if if, if the ring is available from time to time and you pay for it, you will get your money's worth. Yes. Go and practice some stuff. I mean, they have the pads there to land on the yes. landing pads. Um, I'm pretty sure some of the, the indie guys or some of the guys who are more focused into going further would love, like CJ, would love to just be there and, uh, you know, help work on stuff. Even the basics. You need someone to help work on punching. Punching is extremely important. If you can't sell a proper punch, you've just blown half of your, half the mystique of, of the wrestling, half the kayfabe. If I, if I can't throw a, a, a decent punch and a kid notices it looks like shit, I immediately look like shit. I don't care if I can do a fucking tiger or fucking <laughs> super bomb. It, if I can't punch right, it's going to look like shit from the very start. That's and nice. that just blows everything up. Um, so again, give us the money. Give Rush the money. Give Jesse the money. Show them the money because it really helps. I mean, even, even if you want to pay in advance, pay in advance. That's all it takes, guys. CJ Price, the price, the price <laughs> to be a wrestler because it's not cheap. No, because nothing you, in the world is free. Exactly. You're either learning here in a nice, safe environment where I can honestly say that, you know, everyone here is, is pretty damn safe to a certain degree. Uh, a, a good place to work, a good place to talk about, you know, what what's going to work and what doesn't work with anyone. Because this, this isn't a competition. Who are we in compete with? We see like a hundred, a hundred people might see one person's match on YouTube. You know, maybe a couple hundred because Big C, because Big C apparently is extremely <laughs> fucking popular for some reason. Yeah. He's got like 500 views on one of a his... A thousand views. A thousand, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. So, I mean, we're not exactly in contention with anyone here but ourselves. We are we are striving to do what's best for ourselves in regards to making ourselves better. And making ourselves better is also learning how to get your own ass kicked. You know, I mean, you it, that's great. You do a swan time, but if you can't sell a punch, the guy no one no one's going to want to work with you. For God's sake, throw one. <laughs> or or throw one. Um, no one's no one's going to want to work with you. No one. So if you're going to go in the Indies, practice here. Practice your hardest here. Again, you pay for it. You know, let's just learn. So, uh, so again, this is Bafo, Mr. Eric Drake with Bafo asks what episode three. CJ, thank you very much for helping me out. And uh, Bafo says what? Uh, Bafo asks what? Woohoo! Call back. Uh, episode four will hopefully be out before the show after this one but then again we're so early taping this one i don't know maybe i'll do a little something special in the meantime we don't know we'll have to check it out so again thank you very much cj price and y'all have a bafo day see you guys later